Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third webinar on the Innovation Partnership. Uh, we are again uh, very high number of registrations, almost at basically 300 people from all over Europe and also beyond. Um, largest member state is Italy, but also many from Belgium, France, Spain, Germany, and also Romania. We are very happy. Uh, the single body with the highest number of registration is the Innovation Agency from Portugal, which, which is very good for us. It's meaning, this means that we are really uh, targeting the right uh, stakeholders with uh, this event. Um, of course, uh, we really hope that you and your families are uh, safe in this uh, difficult uh, situation, in these difficult conditions. Um, we really look forward to hear from our uh, speakers. I uh, just have to recall the housekeeping rules. You have received them already through mails and are the same of the previous webinars. If you had the opportunity to listen to any of those. Um, so I've just recall how the meeting is going to run, to be conducted. All the participants will follow only via web streaming the webinar. Um, only the speakers and um, will have their mics and their video switched on. Uh, however, all participants will have the opportunity to raise questions by using Slido. You have received in the mail uh, the indication how it works. And uh, you can, uh, of course, indicate, we will be grateful if you could indicate your name and to whom the question is addressed. All questions that remain uh, unanswered normally are uh, collected and answered afterwards through our LinkedIn group, Agents of Innovation Procurement. Um, the objective of today's webinar, which concludes this cycle of webinars on the innovation partnership, is about uh, ne negotiation and execution of an innovation partnership project. The webinar is uh, split in two parts. The first part will have the presentations from uh, two buyers and one supplier. This is the first time we have the pleasure of having one supplier, and this is an important complement to our webinar and also then the interaction with the audience. Um, without any further ado, I would like to start introducing our distinguished speakers. Um, we have really taken care of identifying uh, them for this last webinar. We have first Delphine Matou, uh, which is from the Economic Development Branch of Communauté d'Agglomération des Pays Basques in France. Laetitia Jourdain, which is head of uh, Rivage Protec, uh, manager of the Surveillance and Forecast Center of, for the Management of Aquatic Environment of Suez. And then Professor Joost Gotert from the University of Applied Science, Niederrhein in Germany. As usual, uh, we start our webinar with uh, a small uh, poll. This is to uh, um, icebreak and also warm up with the use of Slido. Um, the objective of this poll is to see uh, a little bit what are the, your intention vis-a-vis <coughs> -vis the organization of an innovation partnership project. There will be four possible uh, questions and uh, the question, the four, four possible options for reply. Have you organized or intend to organize an innovation partnership? And let's see how participants decides to answer to these questions. So far, only two answers. Let's hope that uh, we will get a little bit more of answers and a little bit more of uh, participation from our speakers, from our uh, participants to the webinar. It looks that there is not much progress. It's a little bit odd. Let's hope that there is not uh, any technical uh, problem, let's give you maybe 30 seconds to, to answer the questions. We are now at 21 answers, that's very good, and there is a 50% of respondents so far say that they will consider it. Uh, 
uh, almost 40 percent indicate none of the above unfortunately there is not the possibility to provide uh, uh, an open field for answers 13% of participants are, 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 have already done it, and some, in some cases, they have either in, uh, done it or they consider it. So it's very positive uh, and uh, inspiring, uh, have to say, results for our work. So this means that uh, we hope that these, uh, these webinars are also helpful and uh, to prepare, uh, to prepare uh, those, those projects. So to move ahead with the... Um, with our agenda, we have uh, 30 to 38 answers. We have, we, uh, I just want to also highlight that we had, uh, we have planned another webinar. This is planned for the 10th of March, and it's about attracting agile SMEs and startups. We have planned uh, to have five speakers, including buyers and uh, suppliers, uh, startups. We will send a mail to all those which are registered uh, today in, in our mailing list, and we, we hope that you will find it interesting and, and join it. So let's come back to today's topic. It's about, uh, as a, um, it's about uh, um, negotiation and execution of an innovation partnership. The negotiation can take place on many aspects, uh, technical content, methodologies, tools used, also the financial offers. The execution typically R&D, which can be split in different uh, phases, and also there are questions relating to price and IPR. Of course, the objective of the negotiation is aiming at improving the R&D project in terms of content and to better align it with the needs of the buyer. And of course, it doesn't uh, touch upon aspects like the uh, award uh, criteria, um, which cannot be uh, part of the negotiation. So. Uh, let's move uh, to the presentation of our speakers. I will start uh, with, uh, we will start with uh, uh, Mrs. J Jordan, which will guide us from the perspective of a supplier into a procedure. Um, she will cover the main description of the project, the procurement procedures, and highlight the strength and weakness. Uh, Madame Delphine Matou uh, from Basque Country Urban Community will cover uh, non-mature new technology, energy from WAVE, which is certainly less mature than any other um, uh, technologies uh, to uh, produce energy. And um, she covers, of course, the R&D, the technological, technological and scientific dimension, including, for example, aspects like uh, biodiversity and sound, and the technology and uh, organizational solutions which have been put in place. And um, the last speaker, Professor uh, Joost, uh, will... Uh, um, cover the development of a digital solution in chemistry. It's very interesting with a very relevant market potential. So in terms of order of speaker, we will start with the presentation from uh, Laetitia Jourdan, followed by Delphine Matou, and then followed by uh, Professor Joost Goethert. So um, Laetitia, the floor is yours. Thank yes, thank you for the invitation. So, as Ivo said, I'm uh, responsible for a monitoring and forecasting center called Rivage Protect Suez. Uh, we manage aquatic environments by developing and using head decision tools for communities. Uh, we talk about one of them and the associated service for water coastal quality, which has been co designed with Basque Country communities thanks to an innovation partnership. So next slide, please. So in this presentation, I, I will expose a brief description of the project. I will talk about the public procurement procedure and uh, give you our feedback of uh, difficulties and strengths we uh, met. So uh, the territorial governance and reform have facilitated the start of the project. In fact, the eight coastal municipalities on the basin water competency and a unique agglomeration covering all rivers and watershed is in charge of wastewater treatment, network, and discharges into, into the ocean. They have dedicated a specific group for science interest of on coastal issues to upgrade public services and they are succeeded in raising European funds for regional development. 
So the challenge was to design a common tool to provide the same quality of service over the coastal area, even in beaches configuration, show highly viability along the coast, as you can see on the picture. So next, please. Next slide. Thank you. Technically, the tool is based on three components. The first one are measurement and data collection for an innovative rapid analysis method and remote system and sensor providing continuous data. The second one are predictions, driving numerical models at a local scale to do forecast. You can see a river plume on the right side. And the third one are advices, thanks to tailored data analytics, dynamic indicators, and risk levels to help bathing managers in closing and reopening beaches at the right time at the right place. So the service is operated by expert forecasters, giving advices every day over the summer season before beach is opening and updating risks level if necessary during the day. Next slide, please. Thank you. So previously, a proof of concept and small scale prototyping have been done through research contracts. What remained to be done was to achieve further developments, apply them on a larger scale to make it easy to use and to add value for the public service. So we evaluate that we have to get through steps from five to nine on the technology readiness level scale. Next, please. So there is a few, few, few figures to sum up the project. It lasts four years, covers 22 beaches. It has cost 1,351 scale euros with two amendments to include more bathing areas. And at the end of the project, we estimate the service performance rate is over 96% when we compare water quality forecast to analysis results led by a health agency monitoring according to Basin Water European regulation. Next, please. So a few words about the public procurement procedure. Next, thank you. The competitive phase lasted uh, six months from the call for publication up to the market notification and the contract signature. There, were, there was a public hearing communication after steps of uh, question and answers. And the main topics discussed were our understanding of uh, specifications and uh, our research program ambition. And uh, the idea was to put the cursor at the right place and uh, it's a place uh, expected by the buyer. We also discussed about BIPR. So next, please. Then the research and development phase start at December 2016 and lasted two years and a half with uh, specific developments on sensitive bathing areas, measurements, campaigns, and numerical models implementation in the computing platform. Next, please. Uh, the commercial phase lasted to his as well, we define um, how basing manager are going to use the decision tool. Uh, so we design two services, one called online mode and another one that we call offline mode. In the online mode, we define what we need to operate tools and publish quality forecasts every day. So the service is composed of time dedicated to do forecasts, on-call service, crisis management support, and maintenance and uh, computing tasks as software that are hosting and service. In the um, offline mode, we use numerical models to replay interested events to adapt strategies 
define new indicators to better manage sewage, ne sewage network and improve receiving water protection. We do continuous improvement on tools for hand users. And in addition, we explore other ways to use tools to give a water quality information all year for other application uh, like uh, public facilities which use seawater inlet as a swimming pool, marine museum, or thalassotherapy. Next, please. The execution phase lasted over the four years contract and uh, it was composed of training sessions at the beginning of each summer season for end users, meetings with the technical staff every two months. Uh, we provide technical deliverables at each meeting and uh, there was a steering committee with elected representatives twice a year. So now we are at the end of the commercial phase. We are able to, to deliver a solution as a, as a software, as a service, and offer for the buyer the possibility to do the service by themselves with a tool access or to, to delegate a full service support. Next, please. So I try to do a balance sheet of difficulties and strengths. Next. next. So difficulties are on the left side and the uh, benefits or strengths are on the right side. Um, we think so that for the buyers, difficulties could be the, the governance of other territory and, uh, and the need support to, to define scientific and technical requirements. So I put uh, this in the yellow square. And the benefits in the blue square are to accelerate service providers, add value for citizens, keep a link with the scientific community, and to have a, a guarantee to, to get results, to develop as well economic and skills on the territory, to be confident uh, with the public market procedure. And for the suppliers, difficulty, uh, difficulties in the orange square uh, with well, the time and manpower for the negotiations, we could represent a real investment uh, and the need to clarify and protect BIPR. And uh, we have to know that it is applied for, for, it is for applied research only. And the benefits in the green square are to, to get a contract solution between research and service, to design it with end users and uh, that is a guarantee that the service will be useful and it will be used. The, the duration of the contract and uh, that we have no need to bring a financial contribution for our home resources. So I'm finished. I will, uh, I will be with my colleague, Mathias Delphé, who is in charge of scientific research and innovation for the center to answer your question. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Leticia. It was very clear. I'll pass now the floor to Delphine Matou. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so I'm Delphine Matou. I'm working for the Basque Country Urban Community as Blue Economy Project Manager and uh, the Innovation Cell uh, Head. Um, I will uh, present you uh, the second innovation uh, partnership uh, for the urban, uh, Basque Country Urban Community. I will talk about the feasibility study on a wave energy pilot site in South of France. Uh, so thank you, Leticia, for presenting the first one. Uh, so let's uh, start with a little bit of geography. So the Basque Country is... Uh, uh, in the western south of France is a cross-border territory. Uh, the Basque Country urban community is uh, representing 158 towns for 300,000 inhabitants and 3,000 ki uh, square kilometers. It's the second population basin of uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine region and uh, is uh, really uh, well known for its wave uh, because of uh, coastal um, territory. Uh, so the next slide, please. 
So uh, let's focus on the, our project, the feasibility study on the wave energy quality site in South of France. Uh, the main objective is uh, doing uh, marine spatial planning for the setup of the wave, wave energy pilot sites. This project uh, is um, is uh, led in by two partners, the Basque Country Urban Community as a contracting authority and the region of Nouvelle-Aquitaine. The budget of our project is uh, around 1 million, uh, 100,000 euros. Uh, with the funding of uh, the European Regional Development Fund uh, for 75% and the self-financing from uh, our the Basque Country Urban Community. Uh, our main goal in this project is doing the state of the art of the Marine Renewable Energy Preview Study on our territory and a state of the art of the data available on, uh, on our coastline. Uh, selected, uh, select a suitable area to set up a future wave energy pilot site. Uh, doing data acquisition, analysis and interpretation of the selected area. And as a transverse topic, uh, doing an expertise on current and future uh, wave energy combatters technologies. Next slide, please. So our partners consortium uh, is um, a seven organism uh, group. Uh, the attorney is uh, Rivash Protec, so uh, with uh, six uh, subcontractors, -contract uh, ASTI, a technical center from Spain, uh, Centre de la Mer, a research center from Biarritz, Cré Océan, an oceanography um, company, Energy Lalid, also an oceanography company, Forexco Maritime, and Surfrider, uh, well known uh, as a non governmental uh, organization. Uh, our project is uh, scheduled on three years and a half. Uh, we started uh, the innovation partnership. On September 2019, with the research phase, uh, this phase will end uh, on March uh, 2021 with the area selection. Then uh, we will follow this phase with the development phase and then the acquisition phase and source design. Uh, the emulation partnership will end uh, in March 2023. The next slide, please. Uh, the deliverables and results uh, expected by uh, our um, urban community is a uh, uh, two square kilometer selected area and a full database with uh, some technical and scientific uh, data as uh, basimetry, geology, some marine acoustic, biodiversity, physical dynamics and so on and so forth. And uh, the deliverables are two decision-making tools, one on planification for wave energy production areas, and another on technologies analysis tool uh, fitting with territory features. Thank you. Let's focus on the public procurement procedure. Um, let's have an overview with this diagram. So we started uh, the procedure selection in July 2017 with uh, our uh, permanent council vote. And we end uh, uh, this procedure in uh, September 2012. So uh, during this phase, we work with the CEREMA the CEREMA is a technical center which uh, specialized on the mobility, risk management, environment, landscaping, and marine renewable energy. Uh, we also work between the procedure selection and the call for tenders on technical spe specification design. And uh, during this procedure, we worked on, we worked on the grant identification. Next slide, please. 
and let's have a focus on the competitive phase. So uh, it started uh, in, in uh, November 2018 with a uh, overall and specific technical questions we sent to uh, the, the applicants. Uh, the answer deadline was on um, February 2019. Uh, the main topics discussed was about IP, data management, uh, deliverables nature, and innovative fields. Uh, this phase was uh, uh, imagined to prepare the public hearing. Uh, so we launched the convocation and requirements on February 2019 uh, to um, and the first public hearing was on March 2019. The main topic discussed was about the consortium and references presentation and technical and financial offer presentation. So it was a, a general uh, first public hearing. Then uh, we decided to organize uh, another public hearing uh, focused on several um, about technical subject and financial aspects. Uh, the final offer deadline was on April 2019 and the notification and signature of the contract in September 2019. Next slide, please. Uh, so we are now in the middle of the execution of our innovation partnership. I like to focus on the project management so um, the head of the project is Rivage Protec, and uh, the project management was well organized and well presented uh, in, in the offer. So we have an interim um, cell uh, project cell with the economic unit of the urban community and the water coastline and natural environments units. Uh, we have also the, our partners in uh, New Aquitan region with uh, competent uh, technicians. And uh, our only, uh, we uh, refer to the Rivage Protec, who organized all the project uh, committee and uh, the exchange groups, and uh, who follow the project uh, for uh, all the contractions. Next slide, please. And I like to present this uh, uh, planning. Uh, the object is to uh, show you that uh, the organization of the project is uh, really clear, uh, really precise. So uh, each task is uh, described. Uh, with uh, some milestone identified uh, with a special technical and uh, steering committee. So uh, for the execution phase, it uh, helped us to uh, follow the project uh, as well as we can. And we follow this planning uh, uh, as well as, as we can in this uh, specific um, period with the COVID crisis. Uh, um, this really clear uh, planning, I think it's one of the most important things to have a great following of this of the project. And uh, it was the objective to present you that um, for, uh, for our project. So I would like to thank you all and uh, I'm ready to answer this question. This question. Many thanks, Delphine. Joost, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ivo. Um, let me introduce you a slightly different project. So uh, our topic is dig digital solutions and chemistry, and we represent an Euregio project here between the Netherlands and Germany, and it started in 2016. And of course, the first thing we did was uh, clearly understand our needs when we look to what we call chemistry 4.0 and sustainable solutions for chemistry. And of course, the background of all of us is surface chemistry. On the next slide, I'll show you the challenge we faced. So we wanted to have innovation 
And at the same time, if you think of innovation, you need to uh, think of risk. So the university as a um, leader in this project, we have to follow very formal and strict procedures when it comes to the bidding process. And uh, if you ever have tried to specify innovation, you will not embrace or will not be embraced by the um, business community because they minimize risk and innovation obviously is the opposite. When we discussed with our partners digital solutions, there were two aspects to it, that one was automation and the other was uh, digitalization. That means making models uh, using data to predict performance. The market analysis showed that there are hardly any suppliers. You can find a few companies uh, special, specialized in automation, but there is hardly any off-the-shelf solution when it comes to machine learning, artificial intelligence. And so what we did is we, um, well, we looked to our legal department here at the university that was in um, the uh, yeah, spring and summer of 2017. And we discussed how we best can follow our formal procedures and still get some in innovation included. And so we did that and we came up with this innovation program as the best choice. So I'm switching to the right side of the slide here. And we uh, looked around and we only had one serious competitor to, uh, who was willing to provide a bid. And we, um, when we did the, let's say, market analysis, we uh, found out that our idea of innovation, that means uh, fully digitalizing the process, is not a yeah, ready to buy product on the market. And so we need to compromise. And compromise means negotiations. The negotiations process uh, took several iterations. We started that back in June of 2017. And by the end of uh, 2017 or uh, beginning of 2018, January, February, we signed the contract and we are still in this contract. Um, and I'll show you where we stay right now. The good thing about this process is that we could, uh, through the negotiations, minimize the risk for the supplier, yet we got the most, let's say, uh, or the best uh, innovation um, yeah, offer from them at a fair and I hope for both parties reasonable price. On the next slide, and now I'm switching topics here, I'm going a little bit into the chemistry, I would like to introduce us. On the left side, you see our HIT Institute at the Hochschule Niederrhein. In our institute, we combine um, chemical experts, data, anal and data analysis experts, automation experts. So we have the wealth of the university in terms of bandwidth and different interests. On the right side, you have our partner, that is the ChemSpeed company out of Füllensdorf near Basel in Switzerland. And they are in the business of, well, they have automated solutions, yet um, they can only support the R&D process with their preset solutions and they don't use innovation. Our idea, switching to the left again, is the iHIT solution engine, where you combine the automation with uh, yeah, in situ data analysis using machine learning algorithms developed here at our university. On the next slide, you will see the, um, well, <laughs> you will see the floor plan of our facility. So um, the ChemSpeed solution is clearly marked and in blue on the left side, and you see some of the additions that our university experts have already looked in. For example, an automated surface testing equipment or a high resolution laser scan microscope or at the bottom, a specialized tool to uh, code textiles with functional coatings. In order to get all the information into one um, database and also have the samples shipped between the ChemSpeed solution and the um, and the yeah, innovative solutions at our university, we needed the innovation solution in this program. And these are the mobile robotic systems that can interface with ChemSpeed's automation and yet are flexible enough to interface with our um, yeah, ideas. On the next slide, you will see the um, 
the challenge that we face uh, when we do research in the area of, do we see the next slide? Yeah, no, this is first the impression uh, where we at. Um, you see on the right side, the facility from the outside and the bottom picture, you get an idea of the equipment being currently uh, being installed. It's operational, I'll show you a video at the end. And you also see the workspace of a modern chemist uh, who has a strong um, data background. It looks like um, the cockpit of a modern jet. On the right, uh, left side, you see the two aspects of a university. You see the traditional education illustrated by the young lady in the top picture, mixing colors uh, to her own specification. And you see the advanced education using robotic tools supporting the chemists. The next slide gives you an idea how the acceleration of innovation or of finding new uh, materials is done. We have a mathematical model that's in between the two um, uh, parentheses um, that combines the input parameters of a typical coating. These are binders, pigments, fillers, solvents, and so on. Uh, these are our variables x1 to xn, and they combine it with the properties of a material. So it's a, the function of properties of y's uh, depend on the input parameters. And how do you do this? Well, you use machine learning and high level of automation to generate good data. And with the good data, you make a model. You see the bottom left image uh, representing the approach. This is a, a deep Gaussian covariant network. So it's combining uh, the Gaussian process with the, um, uh, the neural networks. And on the right side, you see that little in, uh, in box area, you don't need many experiments to start. You basically start with a few data points and already have a very coarse model and iteratively, and that means fast because it's automated and only a few uh, iterations. Iteratively, you get a new product uh, with this approach. The key is that you have a digital twin, a model of your chemistry that allows you to predict its performance. Even when you have, let's say, 10 input parameters, you get the model with about 100 experiments with when you think of design of experiment is very amazing. So I'm stopping here with the chemistry and show you the last slide. And the last slide gives you the big picture of tomorrow. So you see that we have the chance to combine automation of the shelf, that's a chem, chem speed solution, with innovation in particular for materials characterization. And uh, we combine them all in an innovative, automated fashion so that the entire process, that blue box to the left, is uh, feeding data into a data lake system, which is a special kind of data management system, and can could go back from that uh, data lake and control the process as well as build the model. We are currently um, yeah, setting the machine on its operation up, and we have the human machine interface as the challenge. And I would like Samira to uh, show the video, which gives you a little glimpse of the future. So what you see here is the traditional way of making a formulation in the lab with all its chaotic procedures and the hands-on expertise of the chemist. And now this is looking forward to industry 4.0. The chemist is basically setting up the machine. In this case, he's filling in powders or liquids into a storage system. He's getting beakers. And well, once he has filled up his supplies, he is now ready to enter his work uh, place, which is the cockpit I showed before. Main procedure here is to set the order of instruments. So that's what we call the workflow. And once the workflow is set up, we basically hit start and the entire process runs automatically. 
So from the storage, the machine gets its beakers and um, the substrate and puts them on a shuttle and the shuttle then goes through different stations, adding liquids, adding powders, mixing and uh, later on applying everything onto a substrate. Um, once that is done, the substrate is characterized and provides data from, that's the performance of the code. And so here you see the speed mixing, which is a very accelerated way of mixing things. And once you have the coating characterized, you can feed back its performance and the scientist is now setting up the next experiment. And this process can be done automatically um, with the innovation from this project. Thank you for your attention and looking forward to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Yours. So um, let's move now with the most interactive part of the uh, session. Of course, I just recall that you can use a slide to ask questions to the speakers by indicating uh, to whom they are addressed and your name. Just to kick off the debate, I would like to start with a question to uh, Delphine, to all of you actually in the order Delphine, uh, Yos, and then uh, uh, Leticia. Uh, how did you prepare internally for the negotiations? Please be, be, short, please be short in answering because time is, is uh, running. Delphine, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, as I told you in the presentation, we were helped by the CEREMA uh, during the procedure procurement. So uh, they helped us to elaborate uh, technical questions, uh, which was uh, sent to the applicants about IP data project management. And then we did specific memos for to our uh, elected representatives about the context of the future public hearings. Okay, I'll go next. In my case, I had to start with a technical specification. And once a specification has been written down, uh, it was formalized into the right format by my uh, purchasing department and supported by our legal department. Once that document was ready, we basically went out for bid. We had three or four companies who were potential suppliers and um, we were, let's say, lucky that we only got one um, serious offer and that offer then uh, ended in a negotiation here at our side and we, yeah, after some negotiation, got a final quote and then the purchasing, purchasing department. Thanks, Leticia. Yeah, for, for the supplier point of view, uh, we just have to, to uh, submit an offer, a first offer. Then we, we received a new price schedule with more details to fill up. Uh, then we received the uh, questions to answer and uh, we prepare a second offer for the, re for the hearing. Uh, we estimate that the procedure takes three full months effort for a full-time uh, person. Right. Many thanks. I think it's very clear. I would like to continue uh, again with, uh, with Leticia given that you, we have you as a supplier and this gives another perspective, uh, compared to contracts that you have implemented with a private buyer, uh, did you have less margin of innovation? What were the main constraints? Uh, to be honest, we don't have a lot of experience with private buyer. Our market is public service. Um, we work, for example, with the European Union Earth Observation Program, Spatial Agency, French Technological Research Institute. So it's entities and organisms very dynamic in innovation. So it's obvious that we are more margin of technical and scientific uh, innovation in this kind of partnership. Um, nevertheless, innovation partnership in the way to operate service uh, is more interested in um, as we work direct, directly for for end users, 
and it's good for, for previous research as well. Uh, maybe Matthias wants to add a uh, word to him. Yeah, yeah, no, just in line with, with what you said, um, Leticia. Um, there is there is a lot of room for innovation is there in, in this kind of uh, partnership, maybe more obviously than in, in the classical tariff contracts. And this was a, of great help for the issues that were addressed by our partnership. Many thanks to, to both of you. Um, I think we, we can see if there is any question coming from uh, Slido. Uh, of course, I encourage you to post questions via uh, Slido. Um, I pass the floor to my colleague, Carmen. Um, so we, we have a question for Delphine. Uh, how did you organize in-house the monitoring of the implementation of the partnership? Okay, um, in house we settled a technical committee with the technicians to follow the project. Uh, we also associate uh, our uh, procurement service to uh, follow the, the partnership. And then we settled also, we set up also a management a steering committee with the elected uh, representatives who take the important decisions for each milestone. Um. Many thanks. I think we can move on, uh, Carmen, with the next uh, questions. Um, still to Delphine. Um, with how many partners did you sign the contract? Uh, we signed the contract with one partner. Uh, but it was a uh, seven organism group. Um, could you could you please detail why you signed with only one partner? Maybe. Um, I think it was the right offer. Uh, we we have three uh, proposals uh, for the uh, applications call, and uh, the one of Rivage Protect was the best. Uh, I think we were not able to follow two pointers at the for, for the first phase uh, because of money issues, I think, and for uh, human resources issues. It's uh, quite complicated uh, to follow this uh, innovation partnership uh, with one partner. Uh, so I think we will were, we were not be able to follow two partners. Uh, thank you so much, Delphine. Maybe Joost can answer the same question. Well, in our case, um, as we represented a group of about a dozen companies, we already had in the pre-phase of the innovation program uh, very intense technical discussions. And then at our university, I have about half a dozen uh, faculty experts who helped me with the specification. So in the end, uh, all the technical details were on my desk and I could represent us as a group uh, during the uh, negotiation phase. In this um, particular project, we uh, needed a partner who was willing to take some risk because we were on, or we are anticipating changes in the future. Uh, the keyword here is digital lab or chemical lab. And um, as North Rhine Westphalia, where Krefeld is located, is a strong region for the chemical industry, um, we would like to move uh, on with the digitalization of that very traditional chemistry. And so using data was uh, of utmost importance. And in this particular case, we could only sign with one company. Now, during the execution, uh, I may say so, uh, we learned quite quickly that on the innovative part, we have to work closely together. And we did so when, in fact, we have established from after signing the contract, so to speak, from day one, a regular weekly uh, video conference uh, just to make sure that we uh, cover all the technical details and uncertainties that come from an innovative project. And with this, uh, we are kept quite busy. Thank you very much. 
Um, another question for Letizia. What was the main reason to choose the innovation partnership as procurement procedure? We advise the agglomeration to, to shoot this kind of um, partnership because, uh, to be honest, we, uh, we previously uh, uh, already done research contract and uh, we wanted some... Uh, we was looking for a contract uh, to, to, to operate service and, uh, and there is just uh, uh, the, the innovation partnership uh, uh, was the, the best solution, I think. Uh, thank you. I think the question was rather addressed to Delphine. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I guess um, for my innovation partnerships, it was the second time. So it was easier to, to choose this, uh, this kind of procurement procedure because we, uh, know, we knew uh, the advantage of uh, this procedure. Uh, I think uh, we choose that because uh, of several uh, criteria. Uh, the first one is uh, the solution uh, did not exist on the market. So we have to uh, develop um, an innovative solution in adequation with our needs. Uh, then uh, the scientific and technical expertise uh, needed. Uh, as I show you in my presentation, uh, we talked about uh, uh, scientific uh, aspects as uh, bathymetry, geology, environment, uh, things, uh, and so on and so forth. So we needed uh, really uh, precise uh, expertise. And then we wanted to be uh, to own uh, the result and the delivery results. Uh, so we did not want to, to share it with other potential partners. Uh, so we prepared to choose to choose um, the innovation partnership streets than uh, a collab a research and development collaborative project. Thank you. Um, to Delphine. Uh, have you faced procedural constraints during the contract execution? Uh, I guess not, but we are in the middle of our execution. Uh, I think the most uh, uh, difficult uh, difficulty is uh, COVID crisis. Uh, so we have uh, some we have to postpone some phases due to this crisis. Okay, so we have a question for Joost. Um, yes. If I'm not... Let me... Yes. Um... I go ahead and answer it. Um, it's the situation uh, we faced is the following. There is the chemical industry and then there is the industry of automation experts and solutions for, from that industry. And um, the only way we could combine these two worlds is to go out on an innovative partnership bid. Um, because we as a university, we are not able to combine it on a large scale project, project such as this, because at the end we're looking about uh, 2 million euros of investment here. And yes, we, it was absolutely necessary to clearly distinguish between off the shelf, off, off the shelf components which are the foundations for us to just get started quickly and the more high risk, let's say, innovative part. And uh, we made that in our specification document. So we had in our um, negotiations, uh, we had to be convinced that the off the shelf solution really is robust and working like a turnkey solution. And we need to um, yeah, jointly define um, in, as a partnership, how the innovative part uh, is going to be transitioned. Thank you. Um, one question for Delphine. Since innovation partnership allows you to buy what is developed during the project at the end of the procedure, unlike uh, the PCP, how do you have managed intellectual property rights within the contract? Your choices were 
exclusive or non-exclusive licenses of what has been developed? Um, it's exclusive licensing, but um, our goal is to share at the end of this innovation partnership uh, the making decisions tools with other territory. Uh, I think the data and um, of the information we will have on the selected area uh, will be the property of the urban community and uh, we will decide if we share it uh, to the selected technology uh, developer and the energetician who will want to uh, set up the wave pilot the, the pilot site of wave energy team. Thanks a lot. Maybe I would like to add a question to, to Leticia. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the IPR, uh, since it's linked to this question which we had ju just uh, dealt with, uh, the, the, the IPR were fully allocated to the public buyer. So in your case, what was the incentive for you to take part in the project? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so IPR for this project is composed of results and data. Uh, which belong to the public buyer, so the, the municipalities group in this case. Uh, and uh, we understand that it, uh, it's important they could reuse the data required in the project for others' application uh, without paying again. And furthermore, the work, um, uh, the work has been done mainly thanks to the know-how of teams. So it cannot be appropriated by definition. So we think that as long as BIPR is protected, we have uh, no reason not to be motiv motivated by, by the uh, innovation partnership. Maybe Matthias wants to add something about BIPR. Yes, and I agree with, with what you said. Um, the, the Just to compliment, there, there is... Um, a significant part of the work that we've conducted that are that is based on um, a numerical modeling and most of the the software that we are using for this modeling are open source so there are no uh, issue of um, uh, property of this softwares uh, because of this open source nature but most of the parameterization with which is relates to the the, the know-how and the expertise of our team so, so this remains very interesting to to develop this know-how, even if the, the the results remain the property of the of the buyer. Thank you. So, a very interesting question. Um, according to the Article Thirty One of the Directive, um, you have to fix maximum cost in advance. Uh, the question to uh, Delphine and Joost, uh, how did you set this maximum cost in advance, uh, given that you would not know in advance how much R&D would be necessary, and given that public finances normally would not allow to set a flexible budget? Maybe Delphine? Ah, really good question. <laughs> uh, I think we did uh, some benchmarks about um, uh, more the campaign, uh, the maritime marine campaign, uh, which are uh, the main costs in our project. Uh, we also uh, have the experiment of some research and develop of uh, um, collaborative projects. Um, we have the experience of the first one innovation partnership. So if you mix everything, uh, this uh, this uh, knowledge, uh, we find we identify the maximum cost, but uh, uh, it's quite difficult indeed because it's innovation so it's hard to define the right cost uh, when you did not know uh, what will be the solution at the end yeah it's the same here i mean 
as a university and uh, as it money comes from a project, uh, we had a fixed budget and we cannot uh, overextend this. So in our case, uh, during the, yeah, let's call it innovation discussion uh, sessions, we um, found out that there is a shared interest to develop that innovation. And we built a task force that um, on a weekly basis just negotiates the technical terms and how to best transition from an idea to reality. And in this particular process, which lasts for more than two years already, um, we could minimize the risk for both parties. So we are, as an end user, are sure that we get a working solution and the company partner can speed, they can afford doing this development. But I have to admit it's a lucky circumstance because uh, overall we both as a company and as a university have an interest in pushing the digital chemistry forward. And so we are willing to invest more than just the amount of money written on a piece of paper. Thank you. Um, another interesting question. Could you have used another procedure such as competitive dialogue, competitive procedure with negotiation or even negotiated procedure? What was the added value, if any, of using the innovation uh, partnership procedure? Maybe I jump in here as well. Um, the other ones are just too strict. I was not able to put down in writing, and that means specification, what exactly needs to be delivered. And I needed that flexibility or that framework of um, openly talk about possible technical solutions for, in my opinion, a good idea. So it gave us basically the flexibility. Hey, Delphine? Um, I guess it's the same answer as I told you uh, uh, in the form question. Uh, we selected this procedure because uh, of the, the expertise, the scientific expertise we needed, the dialogue we can have uh, with the um, attorney, uh, the innovative solution which will be used uh, during the during the, the study, and I guess with the other um, uh, procedure, we won't have this possibility. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask the same question to Leticia. Has the fact that you, uh, in one contract, yes. had the opportunity to um, not only to develop the product, but also to sell it at the end, constituted uh, an incentive for you? Yeah, sure, because uh, as I said, it's, uh, the solution is co-designed with the uh, municipality, so it's a guarantee that it's going to be used and we're going to be sell it. So this is the main, uh, main advantage for us. Thanks a lot. Thanks to, to all of you. And I, unfortunately, we have run out of time and we really have to, to close. Um, I really, really would like to thank all the participants and, of course, the speakers. We really hope that you have enjoyed this uh, cycle of webinars on the Innovation Partnership. Um, the recording of the session will be available on our website, as usual, and we also hope that we will be able to see some of you uh, taking part in our webinar planned for the 10th of March. Um, I hope that with this cycle of webinars also we have been able to close to, to let's say, demystify a little bit the innovation partnership, which is a new uh, procedure, uh, which is, we have seen, can be applied for all type of different projects, uh, from all type of different sectors, and from small and large uh, project products. We have also seen that uh, these uh, um, procedures uh, allows, let's say, the development of innovative solutions without requiring a separate uh, procurement procedure, which is certainly a significant advantage in terms of cutting red tape for both suppliers and the buyers. Uh, just before closing the webinar, uh, of course, uh, you are all welcome to join our LinkedIn group, which is called Agents of Innovation Procurement, where we publish the information on webinars, on uh, call for grants, uh, and, uh, and other relevant information to this topic. 
And uh, also as a, last of, uh, as a last point, we would like to ask you to indicate what could be the possible topics for uh, future webinars. Um, and you can do this again via Slido. And we are very curious to see what are your uh, preferences. Just one second that the um, screen with the results of this uh, final poll appear. I hope that this uh, small delay also gives you the time to, uh, to decide on an answer. While more answers are, are, are uh, provided, we see that the choices, uh, the, the favorite choice tend uh, sometimes uh, to change. Uh, innovative green and social remains a very hot topic, but also IPR with almost one third of the answers. Now they are completely balanced. And also legal aspect of the innovation partnership, 20% of the an answers. We got so far 30 answers. Let's see if we can uh, get some more, I give you a little bit more of time. All right, so I think it's time to, to close our webinar. We have gone a little bit uh, after time. Thanks again to all our speakers, to Leticia Jordan, Delphine uh, uh, Matou and Jos Götter. And uh, thanks again for all of you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.